Hey y'all, this video is going to be a follow-up on the previous video I did in which I introduced ramps and leads, particularly in the profile toolpath. This follow-up came about as part of a discussion we had in live Q&A number 40 in which a couple of more elements were introduced. And I wanted to demonstrate some more advanced ways of combining ramps with leads. Now, if you missed live Q&A number 40, do know that this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, I'll be hosting live Q&A number 41, in which we'll discuss everything I'm going to show you in this video. and the previous video where I introduced ramps and leads. I highly encourage you to watch that video first as it's a good demonstration as to what ramps and leads are and when you would use them. And I'll put a link to that video in a card up here right about now. And I'll also put a link to it down in the description of this video. With ramps and leads being toolpathing operations, we'll go ahead and jump over to our toolpaths tab. And here you'll see I have some toolpaths already calculated to demonstrate some of the elements that we're going to introduce and some of the other ways of combining ramps and leads. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look over here at this first profile toolpath which is a smooth ramp. And as we discussed in that last video, a smooth ramp allows the bit to start moving, in this case, in the Y direction, while the bit slowly lowers into the material until it gets to the first pass depth. It'll then machine its way around back to where that first ramp ended then it will start lowering itself down, ramping its way down to the next pass depth, machine its way around, and so on, until it gets to the last pass, where it will then come up here to the end of this ramp and retract out and move back over to zero. So this is a smooth ramp. And again, for those who missed it, we'll go back into the toolpath. Ramps are right here on this tab. I've added a smooth ramp with a distance of one inch, meaning that the length of this ramp out here is one inch. So that is just a smooth ramp. I'll go back to a straight Z view and we'll take a look at a smooth ramp with a lead in. In this case, we're looking here. A lead has been added to my vector, a lead in and a lead out, with a combination of a ramp. Remember, light blue is a Z move. Dark blue is the pass depth or cutting the vector. The green is a retract move. Red is a rapid move. In this toolpath, the tool will wrap it over to the start of the lead, not the start point of the vector. It will then plunge down, then start ramping in to this first pass depth, then cut its way around the first pass depth, come past the start point, then retract out of the material, wrap it over to the start point, come down and ramp its way in to the next pass depth. Now let's take a look at this toolpath here and we'll see there's a little bit of a difference. Now I set up my toolpath with my cut depth, my tool, the number of passes until I got all the way down here to add ramps to toolpath. I first came over here and set up my lead. I put in a straight line lead with an angle of zero degrees. There was some confusion in the previous video of why I had an angle at 90 degrees. 
That was an oversight on my part. The angle here references the start point of the vector. If we jump into my 2D view, looking at this vector here with my toolpath illustrated, the start point of this vector is this bottom left corner. With a straight line lead with an angle of 0 degrees, the start point of the lead is going to be at 0 degrees to the direction of travel when cutting out this vector. In the previous video, I had a straight line lead with an angle of 90 degrees, meaning the start point of the lead was out here. So it would move this direction till it got to the start point of the vector, then change directions and move up this way in Y. Now, I could change that to any angle I wanted. If I wanted it out here, my lead to start at 45 degrees, that's what I would do. I would set this for 45 degree angle, and the start point of my lead would be over here. So I have a straight line lead. I have do a lead out checked, which is this is the lead out over here. Then I come back over here to ramps. I selected add ramps to toolpath, a smooth ramp. Then I came straight down here to ramp on lead in. Now, previously, we had done a lead, then we had done a separate ramp. But by checking ramp on lead in, it makes the software calculate where that lead in is, and it ignores anything down here. My distance no longer matters, angle no longer matters, none of this matters. It's going to take whatever I have set here for my lead length, and it will calculate the smooth ramp it needs to make to match up with this lead length. So if I have this unchecked and I have one inch right here, but my lead length is three quarters of an inch, I, my lead length is less than my ramp length. But by checking this, it ignores what I have in here for my ramp length and instead adjusts it to this lead length. So the math is already done for us. I don't have any zigzagging or anything like that. I'm using a straight line lead with that lead length. Now, I'm not going to calculate that change because I've already got it demonstrated and ready to go. I'll just go ahead and close this. We'll go back over to my 3D view in the preview window. And I'm going to slow down the uh, preview and draw the tool just to show you what it's going to look like at speed. It's ramping in to that first pass depth, making its way around shooting past it, then doing a rapid move to come over here and start that second ramp right here at that pass depth. We don't need to see that anymore, so I'll go ahead and stop the simulation, and I'll reset that preview. Setting our lead first with our angle and our lead length, deciding whether or not we want it to lead out, and choosing an overcut or not, we do this first, then come over to ramps, add ramp to toolpath, ramp on lead in, and we don't need to worry about anything else down here. The software will match the ramp to the lead, whatever this lead length may be. The new elements that were introduced in our discussion in live Q&A number 40 were other ways of eliminating these dwell marks. Now, ramps and leads will help eliminate these dwell marks here. And again, as a refresher, a dwell mark is the spot where the bit plunges in to a, the first pass depth, then starts cutting as it's programmed to do. You'll see these little witness marks here in the side of the material. 
and to include even little spots here where the bit stopped in preparation to start cutting. A ramp will eliminate these here. You can also, if you look closely, see little trails here, these little witness marks showing what that pass depth was. Ramping will help reduce these dwell marks as well as these witness marks. But there is another way that we can add to the mix that will completely eliminate these dwell marks and these witness marks, and that is using a separate last pass. Now I'll go ahead and select this toolpath, and we will zoom in over here. Now, this toolpath does not have any ramps or leads in it. It is simply a profile toolpath with a separate last pass. And if you look here, you'll see that these different path steps don't exactly line up. We have a rapid move over here, and our first plunge will be out here at the start point of the vector. It'll work its way around, cutting these first five pass depths. When it finishes pass depth number five, we have a retract where it lifts out of the material, then a very small rapid move where it then plunges down and cuts this last pass slightly smaller. If I were to come out here, do a straight Z view, bring, drag this over to the center and zoom in on it, try to get as straight up and down as I can, you can see that this last pass is inside these passes here. It's this separate last pass that we're going to be talking about right now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the tool path. And again, we've set our cutting depth, chosen our tool, have our number of passes, machining to the outside, and we get down right here where we have do separate last pass. That is what this pass is. And I've entered an allowance of ten thousandths of an inch. What this means is, these first five passes, in this case, with six passes total, the first five will be cut ten thousandths of an inch oversize. The bit will come out ten thousandths of an inch and cut those first five passes. On the separate last pass, it will come over here on pass depth number five, and that's that retract and that really slight rapid move. That is moving that ten thousandths of an inch inward to cut this last vector to the proper size. So, to kind of simplify this, it will cut our vector ten thousandths of an inch oversize. Then on the last pass, it will retract out of the material, plunge in to the proper size, and cut the entire piece at full depth in one pass. Now, most straight end mills can handle this. In this particular case, I'm cutting three quarter inch thick material, the full depth in one pass, but I'm only cutting ten thousandths of an inch off of an area that's already been machined. And this works. In my case, I've done this with quarter inch end mills. I've done it with eighth inch end mills. I've not gone much smaller than eighth inch because I don't have any bits that have a cutting length deep enough to cut three quarters of an inch in one pass. But by removing just a small amount, in this case ten thousandths of an inch, it will cut the full depth of the material in one pass just fine. It's this separate last pass 
that will remove all the dwell marks and all of the um, witness marks for each one of these pass depths. We had another discussion about dwell marks such as these. These dwell marks come about as a result of cutting tabs. This is where the bit comes around, lifts out of the material, moves over to create that tab, then plunges back in. The tab would sit somewhere right about here. The way to avoid that is to use 3D tabs. Now, if you look over here at the diagram, you'll see that we have the length of our tab is a quarter of an inch, the thickness of our tab is a quarter of an inch. By checking 3D tabs, it makes these pyramid shaped tabs. And if we look over here at our toolpath, we can see that. The Z stays at this cutting depth until it gets up to where the tab is supposed to begin. Then it will start to slowly retract up until it gets to the center of that tab. Then it'll start plunging back down. The Y keeps moving. It does slow down again to the plunge rate of this bit, but it keeps moving. The bit never actually retracts all the way out of the material. The bit will cut along up to here, get to where the tab starts, the Z kicks in and lifts it up, then plunges it back down, and it keeps on cutting. A separate last pass combined with 3D tabs make for the smoothest side finish you're likely to get. In the case of cutting melamine, it will also help reduce any chip out on the edge of that melamine as evidenced up here in the red square and give you a finish closer to this one down in this red square. So the use of a separate last pass with 3D tabs will speed up the machining a little bit because the bit doesn't retract out of the material. The axis in this case y doesn't stop moving and the bit stays in contact with the side of the material the whole way around so that you get a smooth clean cut now let's go ahead and close this we'll back up a little bit let me change the angle slightly go into my preview again with a very slow speed I'll go ahead and preview that toolpath. We see the bit is plunged in to the first pass depth just fine. It's going to machine its way around. And I know this is a slow preview, and the software doesn't really show you the bit retracting and doing that rapid move. But if you keep your eye on this edge here, when this bit starts moving around to do that separate last pass, you will see it come inside just slightly and start cutting away this edge that it's creating right now. We see the 3D tab starting to form here. Now we'll do that separate last pass and you can see it's actually cutting away the edge that it's already created. And it's removed that ten thousandths of an inch off of all four sides as it's made its way around. I can kind of rock it back this way, and we can see that edge evidence right here. The first five pass depths came down to this point right here, as evidenced by this lighter color. And if I put my cursor right over that, if we look down at my display down here, we can see that that is 0.6292 inches deep. That's how deep it plunged down during those first five passes. Then it moved over and cut the entire surface, removing just ten thousandths of an inch off of the edge, and along with it come any dwell marks or any witness marks. So that is a combination of a separate last pass 
and 3D tabs in a standard profile toolpath. Now, if we were to combine that separate last pass and 3D tabs with a smooth ramp on lead in, we would get this toolpath over here. And I'm going to show you this because there is an issue. We'll come over here and we'll take a look at the toolpath. Again, all of this up here is the same. I did select a separate last pass with an allowance of 10 thousandths. I have 3D tabs, quarter inch long and quarter inch tall. I did do a three quarter inch lead this time, straight line lead with a zero angle, meaning the lead's going to start out here. And I did tell it to ramp on lead in with a smooth ramp. But if we come out here and we look at the tool path, if you have to look close at this as well, we do the rapid over here to start and we ramp in on the leads just fine for the first five tool paths. But when it comes time to do this separate last path, it plunges straight down at the start point to do that separate last path. There is no lead in or ramp on that separate last pass. This is something that is in the software that I don't, I really don't have an answer for this. I don't know why the separate last pass does not ramp in or have a lead. Just know that that is the problem. So if you end up with a dwell mark down here on this separate last pass, this is why. What I have found is a workaround. Let me zoom back out and go to the straight Z view. We'll close that toolpath. And that workaround is this toolpath right here. Let me uncheck. And here we have a three quarter of an inch lead. And you'll notice that for the separate last pass, it does a zigzag toolpath to come down to ramp its way into that separate last pass, then start cutting. What I had to do to get that was do separate ramps and leads, just like I demonstrated in the last video. I am not checking ramp on lead in. So I specified a ramp with a distance of three quarters of an inch. And I specified a separate lead with a length of three quarters of an inch, do a lead out. So the previous method that I showed in the previous video is still the valid method. That's if you're using a separate last pass in conjunction with ramps and leads. And I can go ahead and close this. We'll go ahead and preview that just to show you what the finished result looks like. And I don't need to go that slow. And we can see that the ramping takes place out here in the lead. We get around to the last pass. It does its zigzag move to ramp down to the correct depth. And there is that step indicating it did do it separate last pass with ramps and leads involved. Another thing to consider is the pass depth. Coming back down here to our photo of our bit, most manufacturers will tell you what this distance is here. Where the upcut portion ends. Your pass depth needs to be adjusted so that the first pass is deeper than this distance. So, as an example, 
will reset my preview. We'll come back into this tool path. And I'm going to edit the passes. Now we can see here that my first pass is going to be point one two five eight deep. I know from the manufacturer that this upcut portion of the bit is one eighth of an inch. The distance from the tip here to where it goes into compression cut and no longer upcut is one eighth of an inch. As long as this pass depth here is deeper than one eighth of an inch, I should be okay. Now, this is a little close. So I should probably go a little bit deeper than that. And the way I'm going to do that is come down here and just reduce the number to five passes. Now this bit is going to cut 0 0.151. That is well within the tolerance of this quarter inch bit. Now if I were using an eighth inch bit, I would be uncomfortable plunging that deep. So I would still come up to six passes. I may even go seven passes. But this first pass needs to be more. So what I can do is up here, pass depth number one, make it point one three, click apply, then all the rest of my passes are at the right depth, but my first pass will be the deepest one to get me down to that point where the upcut portion of that bit is plunging through that veneer or that melamine surface. Now, I can adjust the number of passes I do on this all I want, but I still want my first pass depth to be 0.13. Click Apply. That first pass is going to be the only one that's pretty deep. All of the rest of them are going to be well within that tool's pass depth. I hope that didn't confuse you. We would click OK and calculate that tool path. I'm getting the warning that it's going to cut through the material. We can see here the increased number of passes I have. But the first pass is deep enough to get that bit's upcut portion well down inside that material so it's not chipping out the top surface. We can see here if we crank it up just a little bit more, zoom out some, we can see that this first pass is a lot deeper than the rest. So that's combining a separate last pass with a smooth ramp, a separate lead, and 3D tabs. This here would give us our smoothest cut, but it also takes the longest to do. Now, everything is relative. Let's go back out to a straight Z view. I'll check all of my tool paths, and we'll look at a tool path summary. Using a separate last pass, 3D tabs, a separate ramp, and separate leads will take approximately two minutes. So it does add machining time. By comparison, if we look at the other tool paths, the separate last pass that did not include the ramp on the separate last pass would take one minute, 15 seconds. So it does add a little bit of machining time. But when you're working with melamine especially, or plywoods that have an expensive veneer, like white ash or something of that nature, an extra minute of machine time beats the heck out of destroying or damaging expensive materials. So it's a trade-off. It all comes down to your priority. Would you rather spend a little bit of extra time machining or spend more time cleaning up chip out, trying to repair parts? 
and doing a lot more sanding. So the choice is yours. Now, personally, on just about every profile that I cut out, I will add a separate last pass unless I am demonstrating here in a video. So if I were to take this first profile right here and I needed to cut this out of just a piece of pine or oak or something of that nature, I would do a smooth ramp. I probably would not include a lead, but I would definitely add a separate last pass with an allowance of ten thousandths of an inch and calculate that toolpath. And that is the toolpath that I would run. So, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up. As I said earlier, today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, I'll be hosting live Q&A number 41, where we will discuss everything that I have demonstrated in this video, as well as the previous video on ramps and leads. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a lot of fun for me. And, if I may say, there were a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you hit that red subscribe button, click that little bell button right next to it. That way, you'll be notified every time I post a video and every time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.